Hello and welcome to part two of the Bolt Action by the Numbers series for WTC 2023. Where I'll be discussing some of the unit distribution information of the lists that were released. As always, these images are owned by Warlord Games. Thanks to them for letting me use them. The format of this tournament is uh, 18 teams. Each team brings five lists. There's four players per team, so one list gets thrown out. So there might be some decoy lists and things like that, but uh, I've evaluated all those 90 lists. Uh, there's 1,000 requisition points, generic reinforced platoon, tank selectors, and even theater selectors. The additional units that are available are posted on a PDF on my website. As a disclaimer, I'm human. There might be some errors involved. This one's a little bit longer than part one. Again, I am not involved in the WTC process, so... Um, this information is simply what they posted as the list for the tournament. As far as the headquarters, uh, again this year it shows that players think of officers as attacks. There were only second lieutenants uh, available and command units. So 52 inexperienced second lieutenants, 12 regular, 2 veteran, and 18 of those had assistants. So there are a few inexperienced officers with assistants, which is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, these are going to be Good priorities for the snipers that we'll see. We'll take a look at the numbers later. And these are typically going to be hidden on the back lines with some of the artillery units, things like that. There were 11 inexperienced, one regular uh, commissar and Kempatai, the, the Chinese, uh, Japanese, Soviets. They all have access to that, that really cheap ordered die that they can use to uh, bolster some other units. Four of those had assistance as well. Not a huge number in that lower than last year actually even though we have more lists uh there were more no net medics this year uh, no air observers at all this is not unsurprising to uh be bluntly um, um, about that as far as the artillery observers there were 20 regular two of those did have assistance most, I think 18 or 19 of those were free for Commonwealth lists. Um, so in your games, 90 lists, you're looking at one out of four opponents, you're going to have an artillery observer to do. As far as the support weapons, the first one I'll do is the anti-tank rifle. There's four inexperienced, 13 regular, one veteran. Um, Surprisingly infrequent. Uh, there's a few of them that run a couple. Again, it's a cheap order die, especially at inexperienced 21 points. Um, stick them on ambush to prevent some of those vehicles from showing up, especially those transports. A lot more bazookas, though. Piats. And, uh, actually, no Panzer Shreks. There's just bazookas, Piats. Uh, 22 regular, one veteran. And I think the veteran one is only because that theater selector requires all of their teams to be veteran. However, 44 inexperienced dog mines and suicide AT, 7 veteran. Um, the old joke about uh, the veteran suicide anti-tank teams having survived. Uh, definitely brush up on the use of those dog mines. You're going to want to make sure that you have your vehicles having moved uh, before those get the opportunity to go. Maybe stick some guys on ambush against the Suicide AT guys so they can run up there. Machine guns. Last year we saw just the one. However, this year we've got one inexperienced and two regular. Uh, this is notably uh, because some of the units allowed can be in the machine gun selector. Um, the German LMG team from the France Battle France book is phenomenal. I'm surprised there aren't more, honestly, considering... There were, what, 13 Germans? What what are they taking if they're not taking that? Snipers. One inexperienced, 38 regular, 8 veteran. Uh, so we're looking at just over half of the lists are going to have a sniper in them. Uh, fewer veteran snipers than last year, so the, the correlation to that is definitely lower. Um, a little surprising considering the number of inexperienced officers and things like that. The Notable thing is only one list had two veterans in it. I was a little surprised. There were actually more than that just last year. As for the mortars, one of the definitely popular support slots being used, seven inexperienced light mortars uh, used. No 
mortars in infantry squads this year. Uh, for medium mortars, 59 inexperienced, 8 regular, and 7 of those regular had spotters that they could use. So a few people trying to hide them. Um, if you're not using a spotter, you might as well go down to inexper inexperienced is kind of what the trend is or the, the rationale behind that is. Heavy mortars, a lot more frequent this year. 17 inexperienced, 2 regular, and one of those regulars had a spotter that they were using. A lot of these are going to be in platoons that allow two mortars. Uh, Zelo Heights, for example, or the Soviets have that two mortars in that selection, so they're looking for those two big heavy hitters. Similarly, the artillery howitzers. Um, apologize, the font got a little small on this one, but two inexperienced, 18 regular, one veteran, and two of those had spotters. Medium howitzers, 21 regular, seven spotters. And heavy howitzers, two regular with spotter, and then one spigot mortar run by the Japanese. A little surprising that only one of those was run, uh, but I uh, props to it. Hopefully it turns out well. Uh, so again, you're going to see these probably in fewer than half your games. Uh, for some of the big guns, a lot of the uh, emphasis has been more on the uh, AFEs this year. As for the armored fighting vehicles with howitzers, there's five inexperienced and ten regular. A lot of those are dual use, um, but they're going to have some of those mobile howitzers a little bit better. There were uh, some anti-tank guns that were being brought. There's five light, regular, two veterans. For mediums, there was one inexperienced and 13 regular. Most of those are going to be some variation on the ZIS-3 because it has that dual firing ability. There was one big gun brought. Somebody did bring an 88 again this year. Uh, stationary auto cannons, those are going to be your lights and heavies. I kind of clump those together. One inexperienced, 18 regular, and one veteran. Uh, surprisingly, I think that inexperienced is a dual heavy, um, just to shave off quite a few of those points. And then finally, we have the two Google Blitz, uh, the auto cannon armored fighting vehicles. No Crusaders this year like we saw previously. As for the multi-launchers, again, there's this number is down. Uh, they are considered less skill, more luck. So a lot of the competitive lists rely on reliability, for lack of a better word. Uh, 13 inexperienced stationary ones, four regular ones with spotters. Those are all Soviet multi-launchers. Uh, that can use the spotter for their firing. So they're going to be hiding those with plenty of you, or just to increase their, their capability of firing. Having looked at a couple of the tables, that's definitely going to be useful. There were seven mounted on vehicles and that were inexperienced and one regular. As for the light vehicles, there were 18 just small machine gun vehicles. That's Jeeps, Kubo wagons, motorcycles. Um, there were nine regular machine gun vehicles that were running two or more machine guns. Uh, that's your British Airborne Jeeps, Tokarevs, things like that. Uh, there were seven regular AT gun trucks that were 6+. Plus. And, and those are mostly LRDG vehicles, just a 6-plus vehicle that's nice and maneuverable, but it's got that uh, light AT gun on it like that. There were 29 regular armored cars. Uh, it looks like if you're running an armored car, regular is the way to go, pretty much all around the board. And and those are very, uh, those not just a machine gun, it's usually an auto cannon or a light AT gun, something like that, or one or the other, um, if it's both turret mounted, things like that. 26 regular light tanks, two veteran light tanks. Now, here's our big category, the medium vehicles that everyone wants to know about. There were three regular staghounds brought. Uh, that's your pretty good armored car that's got lots of uh, firing capability. As for the 8 plus tanks, there were 84 of them. One of them in experienced and 83 at regular. And when I went back through, because somebody had uh, mentioned that they weren't sure that all of these had the capability, but when I counted, about 75 of them had the ability to put out 18 machine gun shots. Uh, and that's your Panzer III's, that's your M3 Stewart's, things like that um, that are seeing a lot of play. M1541's or 1442's, the, the Italian-German Pulitzer, I think. I apologize. 
And then just the three regular 9 plus tanks, that's going to be your, uh, I think, uh, some French tanks fall into that category. They're going to have lots of machine gun capability as well. As for the infantry squads, there were 93 inexperienced squads. However, only 12 of those were unarmed bamboo spear fighters. Um, last year, this was a drastically large number. If I recall correctly, the Fanatic change had just come out. But uh, here we see uh, a, quite a substantial use of those. However, very few of them have shirkers. A lot fewer than we saw last year. And if somebody's taking shirkers, they typically have a way to get rid of that shirker uh, each turn. 179 regular squads. Uh, I did add a new category here this year, eight forward deploy. Uh, 12 of those are cavalry. Uh, note that you're going to see a lot of Indian camels this year, which will be fun to see. I, I really look forward to seeing some of the photographs of those. 55, almost a third of those regular squads have flamethrowers embedded in them. So 170 veteran infantry squads. 22 of those forward deploy, 57 of those have flamethrowers, and again, three of those have cavalry on them. I um, think your veteran ones are going to be the Waffen SS cavalry. Huge fan of those. Uh, in these numbers, I think three of the regular and six of the veteran squads are what um, a lot of people call MSU or multiple small unit. So uh, there's only two or three guys in the unit. So they aren't truly squads, but I didn't want to make a, a separate category for that. Uh, so it looks like if you're forward deploying, the popular thing to do is, hey, I want veterans that are going to be able to stay. If they're targeted because they're forward deploying, I want to be able to go down, and even if they're hit, this way I have the veterancy to back them up. Um, a lot of those veterans are taken because they have something else going on with them, a uh, body armor, forward deploy, uh, the mountaineering rule, things like that. Pretty much every time they're taken, they have a purpose to be veteran and not just regular. There are additional flamethrowers taken, 32 flamethrower teams, and I want to say 100% of those have a three-man transport in their list to get them up the table and increase their threat level. There's one regular armored car, one veteran armored car that have flamethrowers, and then 14 armored fighting units. Flam Panzer II, uh, definitely the most popular in that category. Um, one of my favorites brought last year was the OT26. Nobody brought it this year, but that's what the, I really like that picture, so we kept it this year. As for the basic transports, your capacity 3 to 6, there were 18 in experience, 28 regular, 1 veteran. With the allowable tank platoons, you did see that need for transports a lot more prevalently. So we are going to see the number of transports increasing. Uh, 7 to 9 capacity, that's your uh, CWTs, I think the Dodge, 10 in experience, 19 regular, down from last year. So it looks like I want bigger transports to hold multiple units this year because I have a tank platoon or required transports in my theater. I don't need that minimum 8-man capacity to stick my Gurkhas in and make them um, efficiently hitting. Uh, there are 10 to 14 categories, 33 inexperienced, 34 regular. Uh, and then this year we have the 20 plus transport category added. Three inexperienced and one regular. Again, that's going to be, I think there's one LVT and then the other three are some transport that I wasn't personally familiar with that has like a 28 capacity or something like that. And that's when, hey, I want to add one cheap vehicle inexperience to my platoon, and this way all of my units are considered uh, having a transport. And our very last slide here covers some of the specialized transports. The 7 plus category, 27 regular, 1 veteran. These were almost all Bren carriers. I don't think I saw a single consomelet, no Hanomegs. A handful of Altas and Noyas, the SDKFC 250s, things like that. Um, but those are all going to be transporting specialized units, but Bren carriers. You'll hear me with big opinions on Bren carriers everywhere I go. 
But uh, as for the toes, they were all 4 to 15 points in those mobile platoons that require toes, 22 inexperienced, 8 regular, and 2 veteran. And again, as always, this, this appears those direct fire stationary guns are mostly thought of as attacks since they have limited mobility. When, and people still want to bring them in those tank platoons. Just take those, those cheaper toes to do so. Mule teams, uh, horse-drawn limbers, things like that. And that concludes part two of the WTC 2023. Uh, this one was a little bit longer. Thank you for sticking with it. As always, have a wonderful day.